Hi, everybody. So I'm back from Morocco and I have Ben with me today. So Ben's going to join us. We're going to talk about our story a little bit. And I want to talk about the higher self and how cool it is to actually access the higher self. And I want to tell you a little story really quick before we get involved in this big story. So before I went to Morocco, I have these websites and I sell jewelry, right? That's That was going to be my thing that I did instead of being a healer. But obviously higher self was like, no. So I have all this jewelry, like boxes and boxes of jewelry that I've made and websites and stuff. And they've just been sitting there like dormant. And I'm like, oh, I don't have to put them on vacation. It's totally fine. Nothing will sell. And I thought this and I pushed it out to the universe. right? <laughs> and of course, the last three days, I sold three things. And then I was like, oh, my God. And now I'm going to have to find them. Right. Because <laughs> I have boxes that, you know, pertain to certain I have two websites so things that go in certain places so anyway I was like oh no you know so I get home and today is my second day at home the mail the post office is open today so I'm like okay I have to get everything ready and I start looking for two pieces of the jewelry and cannot find them and I'm getting very stressed because the last thing I want to do is disappoint somebody and so I finally calmed down a little bit. I took like five minutes away from what I was doing and instantly it came in where it was. So I went out there, it was stored in our store. We have like a storage unit, which is, you know, we live on land. So it's basically like a connex, right? So it's this huge shipping container. And I go out there and there it is. There's the jewelry. And it just made my life so much easier instead of having to search the three places that I thought it could be, it just fixed it all for me. So anyway, that's my little story of how I used higher self today to help me. I want to add something to that in the sense that, um, people find it very challenging people who, who've learned how to tune in and whatnot, find it very challenging to find lost items using, you know, their connection. So they always call me. And so my mom was at work and she said she lost her car keys. Mm. And so she texted me and this is out of nowhere. So I wasn't thinking of the context or anything like that. She's like, then where are my keys? And I'm like, how would I know? I have no idea where your <laughs> keys are. She's like, oh, I meant, can you tune into it? And I was like, oh, because I was like, hey, how would I know where your keys are? Anyway, I was like, I'm a little busy. I'll tune into it in about 15 minutes. Give me a minute. So 15 minutes goes by and I ended up being able to do the tune in for her. And I said, mom, it's here. And I kind of drew, drew like a, it was like an air drawing, I guess, but I drew the air drawing and we're on FaceTime. And I said, it's right here. It's in, and if we put it on the store and we laid the air drawing down on the store, it was in the back left part of the store. And she's like, okay, well, I'll go look when I have time. So she calls me and she's, and I was like, wait, you never told me if you found your key. She's like, they're in the, the, the vitamins, the clearance rack on the vitamins. And I was like, I, I don't, I don't know what that's at. She's like, that's the back left of the store. And I was like, oh, fantastic. I'm glad that worked for you because she was panicking. They had been there for multiple days. Um, and that happens quite frequently. The only reason why it's people have difficulty doing the tune-ins themselves is because of a, a, a feeling of a lack of trust, I guess. Um, but it's happened more times than I can count with me. And, mm. and clearly it's happened with me here as well. Yeah, I get that question too. And it's funny because it's the one thing I really worry about answering. So I'll usually get two answers so <laughs> when somebody asks me. So I'm like, go look here first and then go look over here. And it's always in the first place. Yep. And yeah, <laughs> but it's Absolutely. like I have a backup plan. <laughs> That's kind of funny, but yep. yeah. And that's Love the simple it. way that higher self will help you. <laughs> oh yeah. That's one of a number. That's not even quantum of infinite ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not even the most, not even close to the most important way, but it makes life easier just in general. Yeah, I think my biggest issue in today is that <laughs> I lost my keys. <laughs> mm -hmm. In fact, I actually lost my wallet. Um, this was a couple of months ago and uh, I 
I wasn't really stressed about it. Hire yourself said it's, it's where you last put it. And I was like, well, where's that? And he was like, it's in your house. Don't worry. You will come across it when you need it. And I was like, why can't you just tell me where it's at? He's like, you'll come across it when you need it. So a month passes and I'm like, oh, this is stupid. Come on. Where's it at? And so I literally went to where I last put it, which I've looked at before. It wasn't like I hadn't looked there. Right. It mm-hmm. was there right there. And I was like, oh. that's funny. That's he so said funny. it. it's exactly where you last put it, which I looked, I didn't mm-hmm. see, but it was there. How crazy. Yeah. And that happens many times. That happened. I don't really lose things anymore. Um, but when I did, I, I definitely um, panic. Um, like, I don't want to ask. I just want to know somebody else ask for me. I don't know why it's so big of a deal. I know why that one was a big deal. Cause I was getting ready to move and I needed my ID to rent a car mm-hmm. and I didn't, I didn't have a, a driver's license because it was lost. And so I was like, "Uh Oh, I'm not going to be able to do anything. I'm gonna have to call for help. I ended up having to call for help, but it was only because I didn't look where I was told. <laughs> yeah. My fault. Don't blame yeah. me. That was me. <laughs> yep. It's funny, lost items seem to bring panic in pretty quickly. <laughs> Especially if they're phone. Yeah, like your phone or your wallet, you know, something big. Mm-hmm. So, but I wanted to talk about how we met a little bit. So I used to be a supervisor and Ben had his first day at work and I was his boss. And so this was probably like at least 15, probably more like 17 years ago. Long time. Long time ago. And the first thing is I asked him how old he was and the hiring manager had hired him and he wasn't old enough to actually work there yet. So I was like, oh no, how's this going to go? You know? But here he was, and he was doing everything that I asked him to do, and he was brilliant. He had a mind that, like, you could not contain, and I remember asking him once, because I was doing the books, and I was like, just quit asking me questions for a minute, and I asked him, I said, okay, I don't want you to ask me any questions for 10 minutes. And I knew it was absolute torture for him, but I could not get my work done because he kept asking me what next, what next, what next. (laughs) And that worked out so well, but I kind of became like a mentor to Ben. And then as we grew older, he would, his mind was always going all the time. And he was showing me things that I hadn't thought of. So zeitgeist was one of those things. So we were like forever friends, you know, from that moment on. And that was really, really good for both of us. And it just, it has been such a great relationship throughout the years. And he's the one who discovered all the higher self stuff. And he's been studying it for, I don't know how many years you've been studying it, Ben, probably at least 12. And he's the one who got me into that. Now, I will not say that everything Ben has asked me to buy has been perfect, but (laughs) because he's very intense when he finds something new and he's like, you have to buy this. You have to. Mm -hmm. And so most of the time I will do it, but that's one time where I'm so grateful for that. Like any of the vitamins that I bought that went to waste or any of the stuff that Ben was all excited about, Um, that was the very best thing because it was life changing. And then as we've continued to do work together, it's just become more and more and more life changing. Like everything is different. Mm -hmm. So tell me about how you got involved with the higher self stuff, Ben. I did a, um, I actually, this is quite an intense story. So I hope we're open for this. This is a little bit of a difficult thing for me. I was, um, many, many years ago. Um, I was, I wouldn't say I was depressed, but if you looked at me, you would say, Hey, he's depressed. Um, I didn't really leave the house and, or the bed very often. Um, and one time I was talking with my grandmother or my mother. I don't remember who it was. This was too long ago. And they said that some, a spiritual person that they know, this person owns a metaphysical store and does readings and does all that cool stuff. And they're very good. I, I, 
I like them and trust them and stuff. Um, but they said that 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 spiritual person had told them that this was their last lifetime on earth and or just in general, their last lifetime, which consciously, if I think about this for a moment, that doesn't really work. That doesn't make sense. So I was like, hmm, I'm going to call up the person who said that and see what they meant. So I called them up and they said and they explained everything to me and it wasn't the way that they understood it. So they were they misunderstood. But at the very end of the conversation, the person was like, you need to get up and get out of the bed. You're, you need to get going. This isn't working anymore. And I was like, I haven't spoken to you in like five years. How would you have any clue about my life? But I didn't say that to her. I was like, you know what? You are right. And so at that particular moment, I decided I was going to go on a little vacation um, to go see my, my, my mom. And um, I flew out pretty sure the next day. Don't know. Um, and I just did whatever I did on my vacation. We went and explored. And I think there was even uh, in, in Colorado, there's this festival called Fibark. And it's it's like a whitewater um, rafting festival. And it's really intense. It's really fun. I'm pretty sure that's when I went. Um, but then I decided on my flight back home, I'm in my mind, I said, essentially, I was putting this out to the universe. And I was like, I will not do the hard work to get a job, find, dig, look, pound the pavement. So they say, I will not do that. I will not do that. I I don't demand because that was a little aggressive, but I was like, I hope, I, I think this is going to work out in my favor without any concerns, right? And so I got home. And so I walked into the apartment and I put all of my bags down and I sat down on the bed for a few moments, just for a few moments. I had a studio, so it was there wasn't a couch. Um, and so I, I sat down on the bed for a few moments and within a moment, within a minute, literally within a minute, I got a, a job offer. And it's not just a regular old job offer. You know, like you can go get a job anywhere. Like if I wanted to apply at McDonald's, I could probably get it. Um, but this was a job offer doing something that I thoroughly enjoyed, right? And so I was like, holy cow, that worked. That worked immediately. So the lady who was hiring me, she actually said, can we meet tonight? I want to interview you at ASAP. It wasn't like 9 p.m. It was more like six o'clock or something. And I said, absolutely, I'm down. And what's interesting is this is very energy therapy related, very energy medicine stuff, right? And so I said, yeah, I'd love to. So I interviewed with her and she's like, well, I do have to ask my business partner, but you're a go from me, um, which means you're pretty much a go from the business partner as well. And I was like, okay, where do I start? And they said, um, in a couple of weeks, we need to get, we're getting ready to roll out this new course that we're teaching. Um, and this is a school that teaches massage therapy. So I guess uh, I should have clarified a little bit, but then um, she's like in a couple of weeks. So like, okay, well, I'm going to go on a detox. I'm going to, you know, start doing this whole body detoxy stuff. And so I went on a three-week cleanse, which was seemingly perfect because right as it ended was when I started, right? And I was doing this, this protocol. Um, and I also did a heavy metal detox at the same time. And I felt, I don't even know how to explain it to you, like on top of the universe. Like I was as good as you could get. Everything felt insane to me, insane. And so I, I was reading, in fact, uh, Honey had purchased a book for me and her and somebody else to read together called Atlas Shrugged, just um, rated one of the best books in the world and we've never heard of it or whatever. So we went and got it to read it. I spent so long, almost eight months reading the first half of it, eight months. And I'm a fast reader. Sorry. I just am a fast reader. Eight months to get through that book. And I was like, this is terrible. I don't know what's going on. But after that three week body cleanse and then that heavy metal detox, I was able to pick that back book back up and I read the last half in two hours. I just felt amazing, like amazing. And so I said, I need to find another way to accomplish this because, you know, star starring myself or, you know, constantly taking, you know, 70 vitamins and supplements or whatever, isn't really going to be the solution for me. I'm not, even though I am nutritionally certified, I don't, I don't enjoy that. I like more I don't know, just responsibility or energetic versions of it as opposed to taking, you know, a thousand vitamins for one issue. So I was browsing around on YouTube and it kind of occurred to me that we have capabilities like this innately. We are born this way. And it's through all of our subconscious blockages and DNA blockages that we are kind of pushed away from that. Um, and so what I will say is... Um, we're not really in a world that supports us in the way that we are designed. We're not really in a world that supports us in self-love or supports us in our ability to, and I do know that they tell you if it, it's, it's possible, if you believe, like, I know that that's a thing that people say, but people say it, but don't believe it when they say it. Right. So I came across this, you know, this, uh, idea that we being, you know, in, uh, 
I was going to say inanimate, but that's not what I meant to say. We being these, um, these amazing, miraculous beings, we could do it without any external stuff. And so here's the, the weird part of the story. I have, I've invented my own modalities as well. Like they're fantastic. I love them, but they're external still. It's me doing something for you. Whereas that's not supportive in the sense of you being able to withhold, you know, hold your power and be empowered to do it yourself. Um, and so I started working and here's the interesting thing, you guys. A lot of people get really disappointed when they start with, I'm not even going to say the course because it's not the course that they're disappointed in. They're disappointed in how much they've accumulated over the course of their lives that they have to clean out. Mm -hmm. And um, in that example, when I first started digging into my subconscious, I spent at least 14 hours on money, just money. And you're like, I don't think I could sustain this. This isn't really supportive, right? Well, that was because I kept digging for things that weren't really there. We don't need to spend so much time in the past and spend more time in the now, which is a very big subject in most all of those ancient traditions. Um, but I did. I spent all this time digging into my past and I spent 14 hours on money and I spent this on this and I spent this on that. I don't actually know what I spent time on. It was a lot, to be honest. Um, but at the end of the day, what I noticed was all of the things that I did put my intention in on immediately switched, immediately switched. Mm -hmm. um, and because I started the conversation with money, I'm going to close with money. I am not a billionaire, nor do I anticipate being a billionaire. I don't want to be a billionaire. That's not really in my cards. I don't really care about billions of dollars, but I don't have any insecurities about money, which means even if I spend my bank account to the last dollar, I know it will be refilled. And for just sake of completely completing this conversation, I uh, have done this. I tested the theory. And the next day, my account was reloaded again. I mean, the money was obvious, like I knew where it was coming from, but it was, I didn't anticipate it. I didn't expect it. And it always comes along like that. And so anytime I think or feel that I need something, it appears, which is how creation works. That's how you manifest. In fact, you're always manifesting. You are always manifesting. It's just where you put your intention is how you manifest good stuff and not just, you know, whatever, sometimes including negative stuff. Yeah. So I then decided I have to share this. I have to share this with the world. Um, and at that point in time, I said there were three people that I was definitely like it was necessary that I involve and one was honey and two were the other people in our group, um, two other people in our group. And um, we went through this journey pretty much together. We spent all this effort and all this time. We met together weekly weekly. Um, we, in fact, did what um, a course that I had put together called The Death of Ego, um, where we dismantle societal pillars, and exciting to talk about that in a few minutes. But um, mm. we did all of these things together, and higher self was always the guidance, you know, the mechanism that guided us on, these path, on this path. And it was like, hey, Ben, we need to go back and clear every year of your life now, which I just said to you is kind of a focus on the past. Back then, it was necessary. Today, it's more focus on the now. However, when they said it, we did it. And so where we are today... Um, where we are today is if there's ever anything that causes us a difficulty or a stress or a struggle or any form of suffering, we don't immediately run to an expert or a guru because that's what we are. We run to ourselves. And if we have difficulty with them, we'll ask each other. We'll, we'll um, usually speaking because of this, you know, I have a bias around my life and maybe this big issue is something that's been plaguing me for my whole life. And so it's easier to ask honey about it. Because she's outside of my perspective and elevated, of, you know, of course, um, and can see it without any potential bias. And so that's kind of where we are today. And what I can say, and this is me speaking personally, not about people that I've worked with, except for Honey, because she's here with us, is that if I want it, if I don't want it, whatever the question ended up being, I get it. I don't get it. It's like, whatever. If I have a difficulty in my life, I can remove it. And it's fairly easily done. It's not difficult. It's not, you know, long-term. It's not when you go to subscribe to some other modality, say Reiki, not Reiki. Um, what's it called? Uh, it's a, it's a Rolfing. Rolfing is like a 10 series package and it takes you, you know, $10,000 to get through it or whatever. And by the end, you hope that it works, right? Well, that's still you putting your responsibility into somebody else. And that's mm -hmm. kind of why it doesn't work, why it won't work all of the time. Um, so, I mean, at the end of the day, I kind of, I feel that everything in my life is fairly on path, like almost always on path, the highest good, especially. Um, I wonder what Honey thinks. How's her life going? It's going amazing. Even when I don't want to do something, it still turns out really well. 
because I just kind of let go, you know, you have to, once you're doing stuff and you're just following your higher selves, like clues that they're giving you, you're in flow and it changes the whole way that you operate. And you're just really not worried about stuff anymore. It just takes away like all the stress of everything. So for me, it's just been a beautiful experience. And, you know, even well, because I just went to Morocco and the travel, like challenging to get from Colorado to Morocco, like three planes, all these different airports in different countries and stuff like that. And only one airport was hard. And by following my higher self, I was able to get through it and get there, even though I had to take two buses and, you know, do all this crazy stuff to get on that plane. And I only had like an hour. It really does help. Like it's completely different. It could have gone so badly, but it actually worked out pretty well, you know? So even though it took a long time, it's, it was great. So I'm just, I'm very thankful for higher self because if I hadn't been doing things that way, I know I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Who knows where we would be? I have absolutely yeah. no clue where I would probably not be in any good space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'd probably still be working at Safeway. <laughs> Which I don't was think that sounds terrible. Miserable I mean, experience. <laughs> I'm over here saying it was it was all right. I mean, like it's <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. we'd still be selling groceries for a living. <laughs> um, but it was just kind of an amazing experience to go through that. And now it's like the time where everything's accelerated too. So people are learning this stuff so fast. So there's another yeah. side to that that's really important to bring up, though. You mentioned the word accelerated. And mm -hmm. in addition to us coming into our gifts in more of an accelerated way, we're also coming up against our limits because they have no choice but to come up. Yeah. And that's also accelerated in a lot of people. And this is the reason why I wanted to have this chat with you, because a lot of people are like, I don't know what to do anymore. I can't cope. I can't deal with this. This is too much. Now, the first thing that I want to say is that understand that it's all yours, which means you can deal with it. That's just, it has to be understood. It's it's something that you've uh, accepted and allowed in. So it's something that you can say, I'm done with. I, mm -hmm. you know, neutralize or I integrate a truth or, you know, whatever. But everybody's coming to me recently and saying, Ben, all of the things that I've used as tools to get through just aren't working anymore. Why? Well, why is kind of a difficult question, but usually, uh, generally speaking, it's because so much stuff from your past that you've repressed is coming back to the surface. And yeah. we always think it's appropriate to repress these issues because they're just too much to deal with. And I'm not talking about significant issues. I'm even talking about littler ones, right? But mm -hmm. when they all come to the surface, how do you cope with 13, 40, 100? And um, all of the tools that you'd originally been using are very external tools, which is one of the reasons why I'm very on, on the whole, I cannot, I'm not your guru. I can help you become your own guru energy. Um, and I can show you how to completely get rid of them. I know that sounds far-fetched. I know you're probably thinking that's not true. It doesn't work that way. Um, I have to deal with what comes. Life happens. I'm sorry to tell you that that's not true. Life wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. If there's no you, there's no life. So life doesn't happen to you. You happen to life. And so um, I've a, a, a what is the word? I've uh, put together a my favorite, favorite, favorite tools to get through anything, really. Um, a lot of people who I've taught this to seem tend to even forget these tools. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a training specifically for just these tools. That means it's, you know, you know them and they're all, you know, really, which there's a lot more you can learn, but is it necessary? I don't know, but I put together a training. So we just explained to you how things tend to go pretty well for us, right? That's not, a, that's not a coincidence. It's not a mistake. It's not because we're lucky. It's because we want those things. And we removed all the obstacles. Yeah. That's and the, because we want to yeah. we let them happen. Mm -hmm. That's the so, biggest thing. 
I wanted to share with you, um, and one of the ones I talked about a bit a bit ago was Death of Ego, which Honey has her whole story on, which if she, do you, do you want to share a little bit about it? Well, I went through the Death of Ego with Ben's guidance, but me actually doing it, and that was really an awesome experience. And the day after, well, it was basically the day <clears throat> that I finished, all this information flooded in. And that's where hidden history came from. So if you watch this channel and you know what hidden history is, that whole series of information came from that moment. The shape of the earth, what the densities are, all of it came out of that moment. That was the beginning. But now I do it for other people and people, you know, purchase it on my website, but Basically, I'm going through all their subconscious stuff. So the death of ego is tremendous. So on that note, I wanted to talk a little bit about why I wanted to bring that up. So here are the tools that that um, this course consists of, which are uh, fantastic. Honestly, the first one being what we talked about so far, meeting your higher self. Um, what we do, and these are all live. These are You get to come and ask your questions and do whatever you want to do. The first one is meeting your higher self. And the thing about higher self is all of what we've just explained so far today comes from just having that conversation with your higher self. Now, higher self being a version of you, it's you. It's not somebody else. It's not a guru. It's not some random energy. It's you. Um, but like, uh, meet your higher self is, is it's it's necessary. It's pivotal. It's it's a prerequisite. It's You have to take it, right? You need to learn to who you really are. The second one is light code healing for the past. And that's where we get to dig into the subconscious mind. Parts of that are what Honey is talking about in, in Death of Ego. Um, this is where we get into the tools that I'm very keen on using in terms of, you know, when things tend to feel a little bit more difficult, right? The first one is elevated perspective. That one is probably your one of your well, one of four go-tos that you'll use whenever you're having a difficult time. Elevated perspective allows you to see above any influence, be it ego, be it an attachment, be mm. it anything. Um, the next is ego truth. This one is the one that I said to that person who was like, Ben, everything I used to do doesn't work anymore. Ego truth is how you quit all of that mind chatter, monkey mind, or whatever they call it today. Um, and most of it is self-deprecating. Most of it is self-sabotaging. Most of it is just really not positive, right? And so um, ego truth is is how you pull yourself out of any in like immediate instant difficulty. Um, the next is future projections. Now here is the most powerful. Here is the most powerful. I said a few moments ago, no more ego, no more difficulty, no more struggles. This is the tool that can give you this. How does it work, Ben? I don't understand it. How can I be free of any difficulty? Well, I teach what's called 24 hour future projections. And what that means is I sit here in the morning, let's just say it's 9 a.m. And I say 24 hours time, what do I need to know, learn, or do? And then you do it. And that stops all lessons. But you're like, but Ben, I need these lessons to grow. You don't need them <clears throat> to um, create adversity or difficulty in your life. You will learn through those, absolutely. And more power to you if that happens. Um, but you don't need them. And so Future Projections teaches you how to avoid the lessons, physical ramifications or and or potentially difficult mental ramifications and learn it proactively. Um, and then the last one of the four tools is what I call energetic compatibility attachments and attacks. When you find your quote tribe, that's a word that everybody's using. So I'm assuming you all know what it is. Um, things tend to go smoother. And so this teaches you if you're compatible with somebody and if you happen to have a, an attachment because through an attachment can come an attack, um, such as, you know, exhaustion. I think the, the biggest example that I've always used is when you go to the grocery store and you come out exhausted, there's an attack, right? Mm -hmm. So I teach you how to complete, how to completely clear those attachments. And here's the thing. Most spiritual people tell you, cut the cord, cut the cord. They don't know what they're talking about. That doesn't solve the problem. The cord's there for a reason. So when you cut it, it's going to come right back because that reason still exists. And so we get into the depths of that. Um, then we have light code healing for the body. If you've had any health issues coming up for yourself recently, um, which I wouldn't say I expect, but I understand we're in a window. Things are difficult. Um, especially if they're coming up in the body and manifesting physically, this teaches you how to talk to your body and actually heal the body. Um, and then the last one, death of ego, or what I now call pillars of identity, um, pillars of the identity. So 
this is in a sense a way to go into your subconscious and even deeper actually to break down societal pillars that relate to your false identity so when honey was talking about it's when she did death of ego that everything started to flood through the reason why it wasn't flooding through before was because of an identity a false identity i can't bring this through i'm not good enough to channel this people don't want to hear me or you know whatever your your beliefs ended up being or were uh, were that kind of not kind of it disappears it goes away right mm -hmm. Uh, now, I do want to mention one thing about this. Doing the pillars of your identity is not exactly the same as doing death of ego with honey. Um, the pillars of your identity are very transformational. They do shift you drastically out of false identity into your, your true identity, which is more of what your higher self is. And so you can integrate your higher self. Um, however, when honey does death of ego, she does it at a deeper level. Um, so you will receive the benefits. They are fantastic if you take the course uh, and do the pillars of your identity. Um, but if you are extremely stuck, consider, you know, seeking help, you know, having, you know, the death of ego done with, with honey, for example. Um, so those are the, those are the essentials that I've, um, I find myself using the most. Um, those four tools are my absolute go-to tools. They are, if I was to say the only ones I use, I'm not necessarily speaking the truth, but they are the ones that I use the most. I use those daily, if not more than once a day. Um, especially elevating your perspective that I do multiple times a day. Mm -hmm. But um, so I feel that this is perfect time um, only because of the um, chaos that's happening right now. Um, I get a lot of requests for help through chaos, even though most of the chaos isn't yours, you still allow it in. And so that is why yeah. the uh, creation of this course is, is perfect. Um, like I said, all of these are live. They, you, you get to come to them. They're five weeks, um, one a week. Um, one section a week um, and you get to you know practice and explore and you know ask your questions and fun stuff um, with me um, if the timing doesn't fit we also do have a video on demand version um, I'm not as excited about that one because you don't get to ask your questions and we don't get to interact however it's there if you need it um, I'm pretty sure honey is gonna put the link somewhere in the description yeah I'll put the link below it's a great sale like great sale for what you're getting. And I feel like it's very needed right now because everybody is bubbling up with their stuff and they're, they're kind of, um, I don't feel like most of the people on this channel are taking it out on other people at all. I'm mostly taking it out on yourself, really. Almost yeah. always it's what it is. They're taking it out on themselves. They're trying to figure out what to do, but the people that are not watching this channel, they are seriously taking it out on other people. Like I've seen a lot of more 3D people just melting down and they don't understand how to come out of it. Like they think it's somebody else's fault, but it's really stuff that's coming from them. So. Yeah, that's that energetic compatibility attachments and attacks. So if somebody is taking it out on you. They're attacking. That's so, how we shut it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little crazy. But I just, I feel like this is like the biggest gift you can give to yourself to be able to know who you truly are. And also to not have anything in the way of who you truly are anymore. It's massive. So mm -hmm. anyway, I'm so glad that you decided to put it on sale and then we could talk about it today. So Anyway, that's below. And hopefully Ben has another subject that he wants to talk about. And hopefully we'll do that this week or next week. Um, mm -hmm. But how to do things like affect the Kim and the trails and things about the sky. So we're going to talk about that soon too. So I just want to let you guys know. Because I thought that was brilliant. Story. Yeah. I, I start when I want to start talking about it right now, but we'll hold it off for until later because it's it's really an incredible story. Yeah. And the tools that you get in this particular case are are they're not mind blowing or mind changing, uh, life changing. It's more affecting. Yeah, you can affect your environment. So I just wanted to say one thing, and this imagine this is a moon. Okay. So this morning, my husband calls and he says. Because he leaves really early in the morning. Look at the moon. It's not right. There's something wrong with it. 
<laughs> and so I look out at the moon and it's over the mountains and the crescent is on the bottom. He's like, the moon is wrong again. And it's always wrong. Like most of the time it's wrong now. And the crescent was never at the bottom or at the top. It's always on the side, just like the man on the moon, you know, the side is where the crescent is. Anyway, I thought I'd just share that because it was so funny because for other people who have not really been paying that much attention to this kind of stuff, they're starting to see it. And it's big and it's a great way to start to say, well, maybe reality isn't exactly what we think it is. Look at that. Yeah. On that note, I actually don't know why I didn't say this. The more we move into this time frame, the more into this like blend we go, uh, what you'll notice more is more and more and more and more truth coming out. It has no choice. It cannot be contained anymore. Um, so the, for example, what Honey was just talking about, but that's as well about your truths as well. Yeah. So what I mean by your truths is you have, you know, a life purpose, you have a life purpose gift. You've got lots of stuff that you've come in with. Right. And a lot of them have been hidden from you, not necessarily on purpose, more to the point, most of our parents didn't know anything about it. Um, but because of this window and this, this moving into this new reality, they have no choice, but to come to the surface as well. Your strengths, your gifts, your ability to heal, your ability to affect the world around you. I think it was Dolores Cannon. She's like, we come to earth to learn how to manipulate energy. And in other words, we learn how to create our ability to manifest is going through the roof right now. And so, and that's because of this whole blend, everything's coming to the surface, good and bad. Now let's take care of the bad so that it's all just good. And you'll start to realize truly how much you've been lied to really, how much your things have been hidden from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a brilliant time to be alive. And I can't wait to just watch it unfold. Watching it right now has just been so much fun. Mm -hmm. So anyway. And if you let it get crazy, unfortunately, crazy. So that's the, the, the technique, I guess, here is to learn how to separate yourself from everybody else's craziness. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So anyway, I think that's it. But it's been brilliant. I'm glad we got to talk. And I'm glad we got to discuss our relationship a little bit. Because I think people have been confused about that. They haven't quite understood. But Ben and I have been friends for years and years. and Almost two decades. So um, Who is this weirdo? Who is this Ben guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh. Yeah. So anyway, I hope you guys have a beautiful day. And I'm glad to be back home. <laughs> yeah. So see you all soon. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody.